Hello, my name is Damien Callaghan. I'm the chairman of Clarendon Fund Managers. Over the next 30 minutes or so, you'll meet the Clarendon team as they take you through three short sections. Firstly, Neil, Claudine and Brian will brief you on going for growth in Northern Ireland. Then Gareth will introduce a panel discussion where Stuart and Shan will interview four of our investee companies about their funding and growth journey. The companies come from different sectors and are at different stages of, de of development. Finally, we have four short videos as a taster of some of the companies that over the next 12 months are raising funds to accelerate their growth. If you want to get in touch, our contact details, including individual email addresses, are found at www.clarendon-fm.co.uk. Let me now hand you over to Neil Sims to introduce you to the team and tell you more about Clarendon. Thanks, Neil. All right. Thanks, Damien. Hi, I'm Neil Sims from Clarendon, a partner in Clarendon Fund Managers. Clarendon has been managing venture capital funds in Northern Ireland for over 20 years. We have a, one of the largest venture capital teams who are dedicated to the Northern Ireland market. In the last 10 years, we've seen a significant expansion of the VC market locally, which has been reflected in the growth of co-fund NII from a £13 million fund to a £47 million fund over that period, making it the most active equity investor in the market with support from our fund investors, InvestNI and BBI, and a deeply experienced team in tech venture investment. Um, Co-Fund NI is a generalist fund which invests in all sectors from consumer goods to biotech and all stages of development from startup to uh, mature high growth companies. We only invest in companies who have aggressive growth plans, who are exporting goods and services outside of Northern Ireland and I have innovation which sets them apart from their competitors. In the early stages of uh, investment, we typically invest alongside business angel investors, corporate investors, early stage funds, and the, both local universities. We have significant follow-on investment capacity, so we can invest up to two and a half million in any one company. Um, and we help companies raise follow-on funds, typically from Series A and B investors, external DNI, and usually with sector or um, expertise. Um, Brian and the rest of the team will give more detail on the amount of total funding that CoFund has helped leverage and later stage investment opportunities. But to give you an idea of activity levels, we typically invest in around 30 investment rounds per annum of which 10 to 12 will be new company investments, so a lot of uh, follow-on activity. In the 10 years of operation of CoFund, we've invested 34 million in 86 companies, and we have a near-term pipeline of 8 million of investment, into t which includes 10 to 12 new companies. The portfolio is split between a CF1 portfolio of 37 companies and a CF2 portfolio of 49 companies, which is shortly expected to increase to over 60. Um, CF2 is still investing in new, uh, new investment opportunities and CF1 is uh, predominantly in divestment mode. The fund has had six successful exits to date, returning between a two and five times multiple on our invested capital. And we have two portfolio companies which have listed. We're expecting one further listing this year with two more anticipated in the next two to three years and three to five further exits this year with an expected return to uh, ourselves and our co-investment partners of between five and 20 times multiple on invested capital. Um, as an underserved location for scaling investment funding, it's an exceptional time to be doing business in Northern Ireland. And we're privileged to have worked alongside many outstanding founders and management teams, working to put NI on the map in multiple high growth sectors. And I'll now pass you on to Brian. Hello, my name is Brian Cummings and I'm a partner with Clarendon Fund Managers and been working in Northern Ireland's VC market for almost 20 years. As Neil mentioned, we've invested 34 million in 86 investees. And this graph summarizes what Neil's been talking about in terms of the catalytic effect that CoFund has in leveraging funding for our portfolio companies. It shows that CoFund's investment has leveraged a total of 180 million pounds to date. 
Last year, we invested around 5 million with a private match of over 10 million in around 28 rounds. Um, and this included 12 new companies. And in total, uh, the fund raised, uh, leveraged about 57 million to the year to the end of last December. So this shows that Northern Ireland ecosystem is able to attract scaling funding from a number of sources. And indeed, we've shown some of those logos beside the graph of um, other investors that we've invested alongside. For entrepreneurs watching this, it's worth noting the local Northern Ireland funds. These include Techstart NI, which is a seed fund established by Invest NI. There are also the university spin-out organisations from Queen's and Ulster University. And indeed, there's Cordovan Capital, which is a small private equity fund that tends to invest in later stage or more mature companies. Moving on to the next slide. These are some of the companies that are seeking to raise larger Series A and B rounds over the next 12 months or so. Over the years, we have seen Northern Ireland Series A and B fundraising activity really accelerate. In 2008, from a co-fund perspective, we had around six A and B rounds. And in the last 12 months, we've had 15. And these companies have raised over 40 million. The next 12 months look quite exciting. And we're forecasting around 80 million will be raised based on current active fundraising from the sectors shown. As you can see from the graph, there are, there's a good sectoral spread across our portfolio, which reflects several global investment trends. But it's interesting to note that Northern Ireland's strength in health and life sciences is also reflected in the number of related companies in our portfolio. Indeed, we have selected a wide range of companies to participate on the panel, which is coming up next and features several others as part of a video presentation in the final part. In summary, we've shown Northern Ireland entrepreneurs have access to finance to start and grow their businesses, and that co-fund plays an important cross-sectoral role in supporting those companies and also leveraging in additional funding to help companies accelerate their growth, accelerate the growth of their businesses. For investors, this shows that there's a strong ecosystem in place in Northern Ireland now and that we are now producing some very interesting investment opportunities. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Claudine Owens, and as well as being an investment manager with Clarendon, I'm also the lead HBAN coordinator for the North region. HBAN, Halo Business Angel Network, is an all-island initiative, which presents business angels with pre-screened and pitch-prepared investment opportunities through local pitching events. We currently have 125 members in HBAN Ulster, 40% of which we would consider to be active, um, i.e. they've already participated in a deal to date or actively attend the events. This number and percentage continue to grow, with many of our new members being referred by existing members, which we consider a really strong endorsement. I'm delighted to say in the last three years, our members have invested over 10 million in 43 companies across 65 rounds with an average investment of 158,000 going into each company and an average investment of 49,000 from each angel. I'd like to say that angel investments have ranged from 15K to over 100K in each company. In the last six to 12 months, we have had three successful exits for our HBAN members and we hope there are many more to come. Co-Fund NI has great synergy with HBAN, each having the common goal of investing in strong companies. So if you're a company keen to pitch to active business angels, or perhaps are someone considering wanting to be a business angel, please get in touch. Hi everyone, my name is Gareth Heron, and I've recently joined Clarendon as their portfolio manager, and I also assist Claudine as an HBAN coordinator. So it's my pleasure today to introduce to you four of our fantastic portfolio companies, and the representatives who'll be joining us on our panel today, and they're going to discuss with you how they've grown their business in Northern Ireland. So we have Christina O'Neill from Vice Versa, we have Mark Shields from MPS Data, Joe McGurr from Boatyard Distillery and Alan Foreman from Be Secure. But before we proceed to the panel, we'd first like to show you four short videos um, just to go through the companies. Thank you. So my name is Christina O'Neill and I'm the CEO of Basque Versa. Basque Versa is an early stage regenerative medicine company recently spun out from Queen's University in Belfast. And our vision is to be a global leader of medicines that restore life to dying tissue using our novel Angiocyte technology. 
A decade's worth of academic research has defined the cell's ability to promote healing and make new blood vessels. So Vasquerta has built on this academic research to create our first product for chronic non-healing wounds, in particular diabetic food ulcers, which costs the NHS one billion per year. We now have a clinical grade product and a regulatory roadmap. Recently, we were delighted to receive Biomedical Catalyst funding to progress our development of our first product, leading to a clinical trial in 2025. At MPS Data, we provide innovative forms of data and data analysis to some of the biggest organisations in world sport. We turn sporting insight into data and not data insight into sport. We do this through a team of trained analysts, some proprietary algorithms and innovative AI. That allows us to turn the qualitative into the quantitative and provide an extra level of detail to our customers. We've taken this approach to scoring sports and applied it to our two primary products. Incognito, which is a product that covers 30 leagues globally, every game in the league and which we provide to professional football teams. In addition and more recently, we've applied this scoring to our ProScore product, which through an exclusive partnership with USYS, we are able to provide to a subset of their 3 million amateur players in the US. And it's not just football. We are taking our qualitative scoring methodology and applying it to other sports. So later in 2022, working closely with Scottish Rugby, we'll be launching our rugby product. And we're going to expand into other sports beyond. My name is Joe McGuire, and I'm the founder of the Boatyard Distillery. When we started the process of building the distillery in 2015, we found this beautiful old disused boatyard right on the banks of Loch Erne in County Fermanagh, Northern Ireland. The boatyard is about openness, transparency, and centered around innovation. We're passionate about technique and how we bring our spirits to life. We see ourselves as artists and creators. We've agonised over every tiny detail over the last four years to bring the perfect liquid to bottle. I saw an opportunity to create something new and different, something where we agonise over tiny details that make huge differences to the final spirit. The concept behind Boatyard Double Gin was first of all to create something that I wanted to enjoy myself. My name's Alan Foreman, I'm Chief Executive of Be Secure, based in Belfast, Northern Ireland. Uh, we have 65 employees today, we're an early stage uh, deep technology company and we use the human heartbeat or electrocardiogram and we build that software into everyday devices. The problem that we're solving is that nearly 17 million people died last year of cardiac disease and we have the opportunity to prevent a lot of that through um, monitoring of people's health. We're working with the world's leading semiconductor chipset firms such as Texas Instruments, Qualcomm, analog devices, and that's enabled us to put our technology into many household name technology providers uh, who make smartwatches of today or mobile phones of today. Uh, so our product is getting out there to the world through our channel of software. Great, thank you. Um, so uh, we're just going to do a, a bit of a panel discussion now with the, the, the panellists. Um, I'd like to introduce them uh, firstly. Uh, my name is Stuart Gaffigan. I'm an investment manager with Clarendon Fund Managers. And we'll go to Christine O'Neill first uh, with the first question. So as a spin-out company from Queen's University in Belfast, um, what support has been available to you uh, to enable you to uh, scale and grow your company, Vasco Versa? So we're taking part in the iHear programme, which is the innovation to commercialisation of university research, has been really essential in spinning out Vast Versa from the university. So this provided training, but it also provided the opportunity and funding to complete some market validation. And I was really, really lucky. Um, I travelled to the UK, Europe and the US to complete the market validation, and I spoke to lots of different stakeholders involved in the area. And it was then that I determined that there was a real need for new vasoregenerative therapies, such as our therapy Angiocyte. Following on from this, then, we were one of a few companies who were advised to 
spin out the company, commercialise the research by applying for Innovate UK funding, which we were absolutely delighted to receive. It was then that I met Dr. Timothy Olsa, who has vast experience in the stem cell field. And Tim was really, really instrumental in providing support for the company. He really helped refine our business plan. And he really believed in the company, really liked the company. And he actually continues to support the company. So Tim then introduced us to our fantastic chairman, Aidan Courtney. And Aidan has been a tremendous support for not just myself, but for Vasque Versa. He had really helped focus our commercialization strategy. Um, I also have to acknowledge David and the team from Cubis, who provided support to the company, but also um, they really facilitated conversations with the investors. And of course, the Stuart and the team at Clarendon and Co-Fund and I have been tremendous with providing support, but being also really enthusiastic about our technology, which has really, really been fantastic. And they have introduced us to our HBAN investors. So collectively, I think all these people are really, really supportive and really instrumental into the creation of the company and the growth of the company as well. So I'm hugely thankful to them. Great. Um, so I think you closed your initial round just over a year ago, uh, yes. Christina. Uh, and you're currently looking to close a, another uh, follow-on round of about £500,000 worth of equity yes. to go uh, go alongside that new BMC uh, grant award that you've received. So we just wanted to understand what the milestones were that you're looking to achieve over the next um, uh, 12, 18 months. Yep, so we were absolutely delighted to receive the Biomedical Catalyst grant and this funding is hugely competitive. We were given excellent feedback from all the assessors and we were delighted to receive that. And that really provides a strong endorsement of both the technology and the team. On this grant, we will be working on a £1 million project over two years. We're supported by Queen's University in Belfast, the Cell and Gene Therapy Catapult in London, and the Scottish National Blood Transfusion Service in Edinburgh. And these are really leading UK research organisations for cell therapy. So this grant will enable us to really accelerate development of our first product for diabetic food ulcers, which is a condition that costs the NHS £1 billion per year. So the success of this grant really means that this is the perfect timing for us to raise further funding and um, further funding for a seed follow-on round. And this grant combined with further equity will enable the company then to develop and accelerate the proof of concept testing, which is really, really essential. Um, for safety and efficacy of our product as well. And so that's really just a quick summary of, of where we are. Um, following on from this, it'll also help us develop um, our patent portfolio um, for the technology as well. And this will then lead up to further Series A round in which we will seek further investment from VC investors. Great, thank you. Thank okay. you. That's really interesting, Christina, a really exciting um, point in your growth yeah. journey. Um, okay. just wanted to introduce myself. I'm Shan and I'm also investment manager with Clarendon. Um, so, and this is Mark um, from MPS. Mark, you've got a very interesting investor base and that's something that attracted Clarendon um, to invest in you as well. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Yeah, I guess because the, we have worked within the football and sporting industry, it's, it's something that, that captivates uh, people's attention. We, we had built uh, predictive models going back uh, the last 10 years and, and, and several of the people that had purchased those uh, models of us wanted to be involved. Um, we, we started with a, a Hong Kong um, business lady who's, who's invested um, f over £500,000 uh, in, the, in the company. Um, it's led through contacts I've had from, from university and wider business network um, to invest, uh, investment from angels uh, in, in London. Um, and also in a very different sense to um, several professional sportsmen um, within within Ireland. Uh, and then th there are two major major ticket uh, items that came towards the end of our of our seed round. Um, the first uh, is a, a group called Big Picture who have have made um, real time analytics models within the poker community in, in an attempt to improve upon the. The weaker players uh, in 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 the market, uh, and they're also uh, investors in a in a company called Pomanda. Um, they, when we explained the the process and the move towards um, real time analytics, were were very keen to be involved from an investment, but also a a, a non exec director role. 
Uh, and, and, and finally, in that journey, we're, we're very grateful to um, Clarendon Fund Managers, and in particular, Sean, for uh, an investment to close the round, but also, uh, equally, if not more importantly, um, lots of advice, uh, advice and enthusiasm for what we're doing and, and the Northern Ireland tech space as a whole. And Mark, lots of exciting product development going on at the minute. Do you want to talk a wee bit more about how you're expanding the portfolio? Yeah, if, if you'd said to me a year ago, you know, I felt that we had we had one plan that we could execute on well and, and, and we knew that we had um, predictive modelling for use within professional football environment. At that t time, we had we had signed a deal with with Brighton and we thought that that would be our our world and we would do that well. And, and people always gave me the advice that there will be lots of spin-offs of this, which, which I didn't see at the time. Um, we were fortunate uh, in, in May last year um, to sign a deal with uh, US Youth Soccer um, with a similar principle that um, not, ev you know, not everything that counts can be counted and not everything that can be counted counts. And, and, and that's really true in, in open skills sports, whether that is at the professional level within football or with promotion of opportunities for... 15 to 18 year olds in their talent being recognized by college scholarships uh, within within America uh, and then in in the past uh, three months um, we have a deal with with Scottish rugby um, with the view that there are similar principles in in rugby in that a lot of it is open skill and hard to be conventionally measured so our, our strategies for turning um, qualitative information into quantitative and the ability uh, to be to be measured um, gives us a, an extra sport to go into and um, we've had very preliminary discussions um, with representatives of the ice hockey and American football communities about uh, about doing something similar so yeah exciting and busy times ahead thank you uh, great, thanks, Mark. Uh, it sounds like I may have to pick your brains um, off camera just to see if I can improve my fantasy football team. Um, so we'll maybe speak of that. Uh, next, Joe McGurr of Boatyard Distillery. Um, Joe, you've raised um, a number of funding rounds over the last uh, few years. Uh, we just would be interested if you could explain the approach to that uh, in terms of um, the, the quantum of funding uh, and the sort of the, the time periods that that funding then takes you through. So we've, we've taken a, a long-term approach to, to our funding model, building the value, valuation um, over a slightly longer period of time. And that's, I mean, our, our goal is very clear to build a global drinks brand to bring Boatyard Gin to the, to the global market. And that build, the building blocks for that, um, the, our approach is bring in our shareholders, build the re relationship with them, not just about the financial support, but also about what they're bringing to the business as well. We've been very lucky right through from Clarendon in the early beginnings, being supportive and making them introductions. Uh, but we found that as an SME entering that manufacturing space, we've had we've really had a lot of support coming in to the things that you don't know as a small business and how do you fill them gaps and how do you get from point A to point B? And so we are five and a half years down the road now and it's been, it's been an incredible journey to come grow from a one person to now 15, 15 of us and being stocked on some of the best bars on the planet. So it's a really exciting journey to be a part of. But for us, the valuation is that slow and steady, build the confidence in the relationship. It, it's a, a capital, uh, it's an uh, intensive cash business. So for us to grow, um, we need that long term approach. Great. And, and I suppose with that long term approach, um, we'd be interested to know where the business currently sits today. Uh, and then I suppose, what are your aspirations going forward? Because I know there's a funding round um, coming up soon. Yeah, so we're, we're in 11 markets at the minute. Uh, and as I say, we're, you know, we're the only Irish gin across these amazing, the, the world's 50 best bars. You know, we've got a lot going on to bring it out to the world. So for us, the aspiration is to uh, really get this out onto the market. For example, in the US, we've taken a one state uh, is one country approach. We've only went into New York. We feel that that's the, the model for us that's really going to add the right dynamic. Uh, New York is effectively one company, one country, and it's really working well for us. We'll hire more in each state as we go through. But 
Um, to date, we've we've brought in uh, recently. We've brought in a commercial director to add value to the business. We've brought in a market manager in the US. We've also got someone in Ireland now, really to build out the hopes of for us bringing that to to life. Um, so the long term approach for us is really just get as get our gin out to that wider audience as possible. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I'd like to introduce Alan from Be Secure. So Alan, persistence and perseverance are key attributes for any growing early stage company. Would you agree? Oh, 100%. Um, this is now my seventh year in Be Secure. So that probably says a little bit uh, directly to that, that question. Um, it's been an interesting ride from a piece of paper uh, and an idea back then. Um, to we now have 65 people, uh, most of whom are based here in Belfast. Uh, so it, it has been interesting through that. We've pivoted twice uh, quite significantly during that journey. Uh, the first time was when we, we started out, we were a hardware business, we had a product, but we realized we could sc uh, scale much better if we could turn that into a software product and be the, the software behind everyone else's technology. And that's what we're trying to do with, with Be Secure today. Um, the second pivot uh, was somewhat forced upon us uh, when COVID came along. Uh, and this is a really interesting point, whether it's uh, by chance or whatever, I think it'll have infected all of our businesses here in some way, shape or form. Uh, but I had just started uh, two months into a fairly large funding round uh, in the US, actually, we're seeking. As a deep technology business, we, we kind of need deeper pockets than maybe some of the, the market will uphold in Ireland or, or Great Britain. Uh, so we went out there, we were doing quite well on that, and then suddenly COVID hit and uncertainty struck the market. Uh, so what it did was it really helped us focus our, our minds. Um, if I look back, we were putting sensors into cars, we were putting sensors into clothing, um, we were putting sensors into uh, lots of different gaming devices, etc. And it allowed us to really focus our mind on just our core product, which was instrumenting smartwatches, uh, which is a consumer technology, and now laterally uh, instrumenting medical devices, uh, which you would normally only see in, in a hospital. But what we're doing is taking hospital devices into the home, um, which again, COVID helped focus the mind around that topic. So somewhat fortuitous what's happened. Um, and we've, uh, every time you get a, a sort of a, a gut punch, you have to pick yourself up and, and run again and realize and explain to the team that we've got uh, more of a direction. And it hasn't been all bad for us. We're, we're, uh, we're growing again. It was somewhat stable through um, COVID, but suddenly we are starting to grow again, which is fabulous for, for our business and for our people here in Northern Ireland. And, and yes, just and more on that. So obviously you did actually make it through um, through COVID and um, you made it through another large investment round. Mm. Um, can you tell us a wee bit more on what's going forward, what the company are going to be focusing on and your growth plans? Yeah, in terms of funding, uh, in six and a half years, we've raised a total of 20, $28 million. Um, 12 million was in the last round. But what I would say is just to close out that COVID story, uh, Clarendon Co-Fund actually came in during COVID and really supported us locally here. Um, we probably couldn't have survived COVID without that help of some local investors. Um, so I'm most thankful to all of the investors that, that followed on at that time. Uh, however, our business, our customers uh, are globally renowned technology companies, many of them in the US. So we've got to follow where our customers are. Um, they, uh, the US has a different attitude toward uh, deep technology. Um, it's more experienced in it. Uh, from the Silicon Valleys to the Bostons and the, and the East Coast and so on and so forth. So we've had to start to pursue that with support of our existing investor base. Um, so uh, during COVID, we met an investor in Denver, Colorado. Uh, we closed the deal without ever meeting them face to face, uh, which was a first for them and certainly a first for us. Um, and luckily, it's going extremely well. They've, they've molded into our business very well. Um, our plans now, as we, uh, the la latter part of COVID, we achieved uh, FDA clearance on our technology, which is a world's first, uh, which has propelled us into an awful lot more areas. 
Um, so now our plans are to really kickstart our medical business. Um, we are launching our next product at the end of April at a medical conference in the US. Um, and, and that goes into a whole different stratosphere of investment market as well, which we're excited about. Um, we're going to raise a fairly substantial fund this year. We call it a Series B. Uh, our US investors would call it, call it a crossover round because we're also exploring potential for an IPO. Um, and there's a whole readiness piece going on about that right now. So um, we'll do a raise summer this year. We'll look for another raise summer next year uh, and see where it goes from there. Uh, at any point along the way, we may be approached. We already have been by some clients. Uh, whether there's a jumping off point, an exit opportunity is too early to tell. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, so all that's left for me to say is thank you very much to each and every one of you for sharing a little bit of insight on your journey so far. Um, and now I'd like to pass over to Chris. Thanks, Shan. That was a great session with some fantastic insights. Now, you've just heard from our panellists discussing their experiences of growing a business located in Northern Ireland. We find that when many of our companies hit key milestones, they need to go outside of Northern Ireland to raise significant amounts of capital to continue the growth of their business. We've put together some short videos from some of our portfolio companies explaining their product offering, management teams, and their future fundraising strategy. So I'm Susan Fitzsimmons from Audit Comply, based here in Belfast. And Audit Comply is an enterprise risk management platform, and we are helping and enabling large-scale organizations to manage their risk and compliance demands. We are helping our customers navigate complex regulatory landscapes and we do this by connecting their risk registers and controls to their internal audit function. So we go across an entire organisation um, from their risk assessments to their internal audit and supply chain management. We're currently working in automotive, oil and gas, uh, food manufacturing and heavy engineering and the legal services. And we have customers such as Cisco Foods, um, one of the world's largest oil and gas companies. And we have also prestigious UCAS, who are the UK's accreditation service. And we've been working with them because we have a flexible system that allows them to graph their processes. And we do this by uh, an assessment engine, which is coupled with our smart assets. And that allows them to scale across their organisation so they can go across division. So we were founded in 2014 and we now have a team of 20 full-time employees. Um, we have taken 3.2 million in investment to date and we're ready to scale. Obviously we've got a massive opportunity there in an underserviced market and we're planning on a Series A round this year of around 5 million um, and we hope to complete that in the next six months. My name is Dr. Jason McKeown and I'm the CEO of Neurovalens and we're a Belfast based medical device company and we focus on non-invasive technology that stimulates parts of the brain and the nervous system in a way that can treat a range of diseases uh, but out of that our primary focus is really metabolic disease and right now we're looking at the treatment of type 2 diabetes. So the origin of Neurovalens really come through my collaboration with the University of California in San Diego. And we looked at the invasive surgically implanted neurostimulators that are a last resort. They're very expensive and they're considered very high risk. So we re-engineered that technology to make it entirely non-invasive. And when you do that, you reduce the risk, you reduce the cost, and you can potentially make this a first line intervention for diseases like type two diabetes. Traditionally, the only treatment for type 2 diabetes is medication or injectable drugs. Our technology offers patients a choice of a drug-free, non-invasive device that they can wear for 30 to 60 minutes each day to actively control the early stages of their type 2 diabetes. Since Neurovalence started in 2015, we've really focused on generating robust clinical data and aiming for US FDA approval. And we're delighted to say we have a series of phase three trials actually running in the US right now. So our funding so far has really reflected that and we've secured around 15 million US dollars in a series A and in some grant funding. And now actually we're looking to extend that funding to really close out the type two diabetes FDA approval. The focus of this current fundraise is really to close out the phase three clinical trials, move through FDA approval and start the US market entry through the reimbursement pathways. 
I'm Hugh Cormican, Chief Executive of Serdan Limited, a company based here in Lambeg and outskirts of Belfast. We're companies in the health sector market, particularly in pathology. Uh, and pathology is a key part of the whole healthcare sector. It's where 70% of uh, the diagnosis is done and 95% of all clinical pathways involves pathology labs and that's where our products are developed for. Yeah, so the company makes um, various products um, that help support um, the flows of information in those diagnostic um, pathways from the patient right through into laboratories, visit you know pathology laboratories, and reports then back to doctors and clinicians. Those um, workflows uh, we look to expedite those and make them more efficient and, and better for the patient. And we have uh, you know digitized those processes and made them much more efficient uh, with modern technology. The company uh, has started with about half a dozen people back in 2010 and since then we've added about 100 employees and two locations. We have an office now in addition to our office here in Lisburn. We have an office in the outskirts of Melbourne, Australia and an office in the outskirts of Toronto and Canada. So our, our, our business um, primarily focuses at the moment into UK and Ireland and Australia. We have a, a mixture of private pathology labs, so we have and support the four of the five largest private pathology labs in Australia, for example, and a number of public pathology labs that we're adding to um, both UK and Ireland and across Australia. We are looking to raise a £10 million investment to grow our business um, over an order of magnitude in the next four to five years. That, that uh, money will help support us um, to grow into new markets in North and South America and the wider Asia Pacific. Uh, there's also further product development, which uh, we have support with the um, Smart Nano NI project, which is part of the Strength in Places Fund, which is helping de risk a lot of that research to help bring leading edge technology to our ultimate goal, which is a company, our mission we see is really to help expedite those pathways from the patient and speed up the diagnosis for the patient and make it as early as possible for them so that they can get the treatment and the care that they need. My name is Liam McStravick. I'm the chief executive of an exciting Belfast-based startup. I have the fortune of combining my passion for coaching football with the development of a great product here at Team VPay. Team VPay is a fintech company for football clubs, volunteer-led football clubs, which are sometimes called grassroots clubs. Our technology helps clubs with payments, with fundraising, and with e-commerce. So in short, our technology helps clubs collect money from their members. It helps them raise money from their supporters and their donors. And our developing fintech-enabled marketplace is actually helping their members make savings on purchases like football boots, shin guards, and other football equipment. Following a seed investment in January of 2021, we used that money to handpick a group of talented people. And like any football team, you need 11 great players. We had the opportunity and the fortune of being able to handpick our team members. We got to launch our MVP in August of 2021. That coincided with the lifting of restrictions for sport linked to COVID. And since that time, we've secured 550 new customers. 90% of those are outside of Northern Ireland. And what that means in terms of revenue is from a zero start in August of 2021, in just six short months, we've grown that to 750,000 annual dollars. We plan to raise five million pounds by June of 2022. And we, we will use that money to do two key things. Spearhead our market penetration and growth into Europe. And secondly, build additional revenue generating tech that will allow our annual customer value to grow in excess of 3,000 pounds per annum. By 2024, that will all add up to 6,000 customers across Europe and $20 million in annual revenue. You've just heard from several of our portfolio companies about their fundraising plans over the next 12 months. As Brian mentioned earlier, we're expecting our portfolio to raise about 80 million pounds this year, which is a significant increase over the last 12 months. In addition to the portfolio companies that just presented, uh, there are at least 10 that are raising rounds of at least 2 million pounds including MedTech Company, Axial 3D, and Changeover Technologies. Now, I'm going to hand over to our chairman, Damien Callahan, who will wrap it up. Thank you for watching. We've covered quite a bit of ground in the last 30 minutes or so. 
in explaining the role that Clarendon plays in funding high growth companies through our involvement in Halo Business Angels Network and the £47 million investment fund called CoFund Northern Ireland. We've had a great panel discussion where some of our portfolio talked about their funding and scaling journeys to date. And we wrapped up with some snapshots that showcased companies with ambitious plans for 2022 and beyond. We hope that you've enjoyed your time with us. And if you have any queries, please feel free to get in contact via our website, www.clarendon.fm.co.uk. Thank you.